Hi everybody, I'm Ingrid. Today I am the mad scissors lady. And what really makes me mad, I have some very talented friends who make fabulous things, but they want to take thick polyester foam. They want to take reticulated foam. They want to take cross-linked foam, thin or thick. They want to take lightweight cross-linked. They want to take even lighter weight cross-linked, old ether foam. EVA thin, EVA thicker, extra density EVA, otherwise known as shoe soling. They want to cut cardstock, fun foam, thin cardboard, really thick cardboard, all with the same scissors. And then they want to cut fabric. <laughs> I can't even believe that people think that's possible. It's just. I'm going to try to teach you all about the amazing machine. This is what this is. A scissors is an amazing, simple machine. You've had it in school, you know, levers, teeter-totters, simple machines. That's what this is. But it is so brilliantly made and designed that it can cut all these things, but not with the same scissors. All right. We're going to start with fabric scissors. I have three categories of scissors. Fabric scissors, cut everything else scissors, and workshop scissors. We're going to talk first about fabric scissors. This brand is one of my favorites. It's called Gingers or Gingers or Ginkers or Ginfers or who I have no idea how to pronounce it. G-I-N-G-H-E-R-S brilliant brand of scissors. I have several different kinds. I mark my fabric scissors with fabric. And that way when it's on the table and I need to cut a piece of foam, I am not going to pick up the fabric scissors. And this is why. Because every year for the Nationals baseball team, every winter, I replace all of the hair on George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. And I replace it with this fabric. It's called voil. It is the toughest fabric to cut because it is so fine. But a fabric scissors can just cut it like nobody's business. Just cut, 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 cut. And no other scissors can. I can take a paper scissors. This is one of my paper scissors. And it just it doesn't even chew it if it barely cuts at all. So it would be frustrating for me not to have a great fabric scissors. What makes a great fabric scissors? Well, there's three parts of any scissors. The handle, by the way, don't ever buy a scissors unless the handle is comfortable for you. This is the same scissors. This is miserable for my clod hoppers and all my arthritis. This is the same scissors, but comfortable for my hand. Make sure the, ha the handle suits your hand. Now, the next part of the scissors is the cutting blade. This is so sharp that I could seriously cut my finger if I was dumb about the scissors. And this part in the middle, this is called the set. This is called the set screw. This is called the set nut. All great scissors have a nut and a screw. Good scissors have at least one of them. Now, by tightening this set just right, it makes it possible to cut fabric to a fairly well. If it's not set properly, it's not going to cut fabric. You can cut fabric, even with a kind of a dull scissors, if the set is right. The set is off, you, can't ha you can have the sharpest scissors in the world, and it won't cut diddly squat. I have more than one kind of fabric scissors because of the various kinds of work I do. I am also an upholsterer. This is the first upholstery scissors I was ever given. I apprenticed in high school with an upholsterer, and he gave this to me as a present. This is very precious. This is a WISS, W-I-S-S. -S. You can't see the name on it. It's all scratched out now. It's so old. It's over. <laughs> ah, we won't talk about how old it is. All right. It has... A, a, an in, internal nut and an external screw to tighten the set 
and I keep it very sharp. This is the mother of all upholstery scissors. I bought this. I've had a lot of weird jobs in my life. I bought this when I upholstered an 80 foot long bar for Las Vegas. Uh, it was one of those bars that had all those little buttons pulled in. It was really quite elegant. But I needed our, uh, to work fast and a bigger scissors you can work faster with. Now, another scissors I have with fabric on it. Do you recognize these? They're advertised on Facebook all the time. And what I have to say about them is, eh, they're just not that good. I think they really need to work on their quality control because when I got the scissors, it had a ding in it. A little ding, it wasn't very big. I had to take a whetstone and some mineral oil and work out the ding. It's just not that sharp, just not that good. I keep it because I do a lot of work with fur, don't we all? And of course, normally I cut the fur with a razor blade. Lay out the pattern on the back, cut it out with a single edged razor blade. Every once in a while, you need to cut a little bit off that fur and that's hard to do with the razor blade. So I like this nice, long, pointy part because it is a fabric scissors and it will cut a little bit off. So that's the only reason I keep that scissors and someday I may just toss it, I don't know. Or I'll give it to make it turn it into a foam scissors. That's where scissors go to die. Now, this is my other fabric scissors. It is a pinking shears. Most of you have no need for this, but I thought I'd throw it in anyway. If you have ravelly fabric like this, you can cut it with a pinking scissors and it will turn it into these nice little bumpy things and then it won't ravel like it would if you didn't do this. Of course, mostly I use a serging machine, which is what all, all good uh, customers do. So that's just another fabric scissors. I'm gonna talk about one more kind of scissors in this set. Oh, no, wait, I forgot. <laughs> uh, this, of course, makes uh, scissors less important. It just is, it's still important, but not as important. Because I work on these gigantic racing presidents. They're t Thomas Jefferson is 12 feet tall. When I make shirts for them, which I do often, uh, they're the size of pup tents. And I cut them all out with my, my big table is covered entirely with a board li like this, a cutting board like this. And it's so fast with a rotary cutter. Then there's all kinds of good rotary cutters. Uh, the thing about rotary cutters, again, this is one of the things that bugs me. People use them too long. Yes, they're expensive, I know, but a dull blade is a dull blade. Why work that hard? It's so hard on your body and your hands. Just throw the blade away and put in a new one and it, you will be a happier person, I guarantee it. Now, I also use a lot of razor blades. This is a trick for newbies. Newbies, if you don't know this, always buy blades a hundred at a time. You can, there are any number of sites on the internet. I use the one called Wawak. W-A-W-A-K. I get all my sewing supplies from them. This is cheap. This, you buy blades like this and, and they're like five cents a blade. You buy blades at, at a hardware store, you get five in a pack for 250. It's 50 cents a blade. And, and then you don't want to throw it away because it's 50 cents. I got to keep cutting. And you cut with it till it's really too dull. It, dull blades are far more dangerous than sharp blades. Last tick, always dispose of your blades safely. Think of the poor trash man if your blade came through and cut them. So I put in here, I have my rotary blades, my razor blades, my X-Acto blades. Anything that's sharp that could hurt somebody goes in here. And then when this is full, I tape it up, throw the whole thing away and start over. The last scissors I'm going to talk about in this session is the scissors huh, for workshops. We all do workshops. Workshops are great. Workshops are an important part of all our, um, all our incomes. 
The very first time I did a teacher training workshop, this was for the Smithsonian, because I live near DC. So the Smithsonian said, oh, we have scissors, we have glue guns, we have, and you probably all had this experience. I got there, their scissors were junk, they wouldn't cut fabric. I, I had brought four pairs of Fiskars with me, just in case, and 60 people shared four pairs of Fiskars. Fiskars. But the worst thing was, somebody made a very brilliant creative puppet, but took my Fiskars and started cutting popsicle sticks, wood, in half with my scissors. They ruined the scissors. They dulled the heck out of them. They ruined the set. And then I decided if I'm going to keep doing workshops, I have to have designated workshop scissors. These are cheap, cheap, cheap. The difference between a decent scissors and a cheap scissors is the set. There's no way to adjust the set. No screw, no nut, no nothing. And eventually, there's, this set is such a crappy uh, rivet, pardon me, that it will pop apart. So what I've figured out pretty early on in the game is that you take a scissors and you put the head of the rivet on a piece of metal. This can be the iron railing on your porch. It can be a, uh, a, a sh in my shop I have a, a, a big vice on my workbench. And then you take another hammer and you smash the end of that rivet. If you do that, you can actually change the set of the rivet so that it actually will cut fabric. Not as good as my fabric scissors, but a lot better than some of the junk out there that the Smithsonian was using. Uh, they don't use that anymore. I, I turned them onto these. So cheap scissors, still cuts. Now, the, I'm gonna, this is the end of one scissor session. I have one more session. It's how to cut everything else. And in that session, I'm going to introduce you to this magic, magic scissors. So come back, hear about the scissors. Thanks. Mm -hmm.